Hello, Keith Rucker here at VentureMachinery.org. Well, I got another little project we're going to be working on today. This is actually going on the 16-inch Monarch lathe. And uh, when I got that machine, the previous people that had it had tried to pick it up with some slings. And unfortunately, they put their slings around one of the control rods uh, that can basically, it's a square rod that uh, you turn the machine on and off. And they bent it. And in the process, they broke this handle in a couple places. So uh, we got some brazing that we're going to do on this. And uh, I've, I've already taken this over to the wire wheel, kind of got it cleaned up. The first thing we got is, is here's the handle and here's the knob. And uh, they're supposed to go together like that. So we're going to first attempt to put that together. So let me zoom you in here, give you a close-up look at it. I'll show you what we've done and what our game plan is going to be on how to go about trying to fix this. So here's the handle, uh, and there's the little knob uh, that goes on the end like such. And what I did again is I came in here, this was all painted, had a bunch of grease and grime on it. First step was just getting it clean. We want to get all the, everything off of it that we can. So I wire wheeled it, and uh, then the next thing is, is I, I wanted to V out uh, some place for the braze to actually get down in here. So I V'd out. I left enough of the original cast iron so that we can kind of get this to go back together and uh, it will kind of index where it needs to be. At least that's the game plan. Um, but V'd out enough that we can fill some, some brass in there, bronze in there in the brazing process. And uh, then that should give us enough that we can go in there and kind of grind it off smooth so that uh, it looks nice when it's all said and done. Now, the big challenge on this one's gonna be work holding. Uh, you know, we, we need for these two parts to be held together uh, while they're being brazed. Um, but this, because of the shape of this thing, it's just really difficult uh, to do it. But I think we've come up with a solution over here and I'm gonna get it set up and we'll come back and uh, kind of show you what we're gonna do. So as you can see, it's kind of an awkward setup to kind of hold it. And um, this is what we just kind of came up with. So we got the handle is in this little vise here. And I got it down at the right angle. And then we put this in just a, a C-clamp, basically. And everything is lined up where it needs to be. Now, it's not clamped in tight together, per se, but it is positioned properly. And I think we can put some heat on that now and at least uh, start the process of getting that braze. I think once I get it tacked in on one side, uh, or maybe a little bit on both sides here, that it'll stay well enough that we can flip it around and do what we need to do. So, uh, I got a brand new torch set up here at the house, at the shop, first time I've used it, so I'm gonna get all that hooked up and going, and uh, we'll get some brazing started. All right, we got everything set up here, and we're gonna come in now and start heating this up. And again, my goal right now is I just wanna get this thing kinda of tacked together and uh, we're gonna have to flip it around in some different positions to get all that braze to lay in there just right. Um, but I'll start out by just heating this thing up nice and slow. We don't wanna go too fast. And uh, then we'll get in there and start brazing it. I'm starting to see a little bit of a color change. It's starting to turn just a little bit of a cherry red right there on the top. So we're just about to brazing temperature here. It's that cherry red right now. So I'm gonna bring my brazing rod in here. Let me get a good side, it's got flux on it. And see if we can get this to stick. When I'm brazing, I typically don't try to just put the torch right on the brass. I really want the, the metal to kind of to, to melt the, uh, the bronze in there, and it just tends to flow a little bit better. I'm used to using a little bit bigger tip than this one, so it's, it's going a little bit slower than what I'm used to doing. All right, see that just kind of flowed right in there. That's what we want. Let's see if I can kind of ease some down this side without it dripping out too bad. I 
All right, that's pretty good for right now. We'll roll this around and do the other side, and then we'll come in and do the actual sides on it. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, we've had this wrapped up now for a while in this uh, heat blanket. Yeah, and I can touch that. So it's probably been cooling down for an hour or so. And uh, I think that's gonna be all right. So, uh, you know, I got a couple of drips on here. That's fine. Um, I'm gonna take this over and do a little massaging on the grinder and I think that'll be fixed. So a little grinding, a little polishing, and uh, I think that will be acceptable. We'll, uh, of course, put a little paint on it, and uh, I don't think you'll hardly be able to tell it was there. So um, next thing we've got to do this, we got another little boo-boo in here. So this little boss right here, let me zoom out just a little bit. If you look right here, there's a hole in here, and there's this piece here, and you can tell that's all busted out. This uh, piece, there you go, it indexes in right there. And this fits up inside of a boss, and there's a little bevel gear on the inside that actually turns the machine on and off. So off the, uh, it goes right here inside that housing, and that's busted out, the casting's broken. So we're gonna get in here and same type of operation. We're gonna get this V'd out. We're gonna weld it there or braze it there. Uh, the nice thing here is, is I've got that hole that goes through. I'm gonna clean out the inside and we can also braze it on the inside and uh, should be able to do a good job on this too, I think. So let me get this prepped up and uh, we'll do another little brazing job. So I think this should hold it. Uh, you know, I found that spot where it all matches down together and we got this sandwiched in there now and I'll heat this up and we'll go around and braise it around the outside. Now, I'm gonna have to come back in here on, I guess on the lathe and true all this stuff back up after we get this done and pray that everything is uh, lined up and nice and straight like it should be. Uh, but we will have to clean up that bottom down there to get it square again because we'll have a little bit of braze sticking out. Anyway, once I get this done, we'll uh, flip it over and we'll braze the inside. That actually worked pretty good, that rosebud tip. I was just having problems with my gas coming back up on it and blowing that thing out. So uh, I think that's gonna work. So let's throw that blanket, open it up. And just wrap it up. We'll let that cool down. I thought I'd show you this setup here. Um, I had to bring this handle out to the lathe at the museum because the swing on this won't quite swing on my LeBlanc lathe at home. Ironically, I need the 
the 16 inch Monarch that I'm restoring to have a lathe big enough to swing this on. Uh, but this part, I really had to do some, some thinking about how to grip this piece so that we could turn this. So we got this uh, material down here that we braced in. I need to square the shoulder back up and uh, just get that where it'll fit back into the machine real good. Um, and the challenge was, was there wasn't really a good way to grip this thing. With this handle sticking out like it is, it's really going to be hard to, to chuck this part here in the four jaw chuck. Uh, but there was a, there's a machined uh, inside bore on this side. And I said, well, if I could get in there and grip it from the inside. Well, I didn't have a, a chuck that would fit up in there. At least I thought I didn't. And then I remembered this little chuck right here. This is actually a little Nova uh, chuck that I use on my wood lathe. It's a four jaw, but it's a scroll. It, the four jaws move uh, uh, in and out. But And you can change the little uh, jaws on here. And several of the jaw sets that I had for this thing are for inside gripping. Because a lot of times when I'm turning wooden bowls, I'll actually turn an inside dovetail and go in and actually come out squeeze out and grip it from the inside of just a little small uh, dovetail on like on the bottom of a wooden bowl. And I had these jaws that had these long reach to go up in here and it works just perfectly. So I didn't have a way to mount this in the in the lathe. So I basically just put the four, put this shot chuck in the four jaw. I indicated the, 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 the wood turning chuck in, got it running true. And then I put this part on here and I had to do some bumping around and to get this indicated in right. So as of right now, it looks like it's pretty good. Uh, I indicated off of this uh, boss here because this is what needs to be squared up. I noticed that there is a little bit of run out on this piece in here. This is where gear slides up on. Uh, I'm gonna have to deal with that. I think it's just bent a little bit from all the, the damage that was done, but uh, we'll deal with that. Uh, it may not even be an issue. I just need to get it in there, but uh, we may have to do that. I believe that that part actually, there's a pin here. I believe that's pressed in there. So worst case, we pull that one out and put a, make a new one and put it in there. But I do believe this end is bent just a little bit. But anyway, I think this is ready to go. Um, let me turn the lathe on. I'm not real crazy about this knob swinging around. Uh, so I've got my RPM set kind of low and we're just going to take our time, get in there with a tool and uh, clean that shoulder up. Right, I sped my RPMs up to about 96. Uh, you can tell, again, we got some run out out here, but this is, this is running on the indicator within about 2000, which is about as good as I could get it. But we're just going to come in here and start trimming this up. I'm just going to do this manual right now and eat that braise away and uh, we'll come back and put a final pass on it after a while. Again, we're just taking our time. I'm not going to bore y'all with all this. Uh, I'll bring you back to the end here. All right, I think we have got this uh, done. Um, I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. You know, we got that brass out of there. Like I said, it's got just a tiny little bit of run out in it. I didn't want to take too much off, but um, it's, it's good. And we, we got it as good as we could on the run out. Uh, just because with it being raised, braised up, it wasn't just absolutely perfect, uh, but I think it's going to be fine. I'm going to go ahead and take this out. This chuck just has a, a um, hex key in there, and you see it loosens up. And you can see those jaws, and that's that area that we were chucking up into. So basically just went in there and pulled them out. So um, first time I've ever used this chuck for metalworking, but at least in this job, it seemed like it saved the day. So anyway, that's... Uh, we still got to clean up this little brass on the inside there. I'll do that in the mill machine. Uh, but this is about uh, this is about ready to go back on, I think. So I got this mounted in the mill now. We're just going to come in here with a little end mill, and we're just going to clean that bottom up where I got that braise sticking up. Give me a little more RPM than that. 
So let me uh, just raise this up. And I'm going to kind of get over to the edge here where I can see when it gets down to cutting in the bottom. darn close right there and we'll just mill that right out get a nice flat bottom in there which is what we're after Got it. I'm going to uh, Yeah, we got all that out of there. And there we go all cleaned up in the bottom we should be good now that piece should fit right back down in there now well here it is i think we're going to call this finished we got our knob welded back on we got our stem rail welded or braised back in here uh, I, I i know that this little piece is in the end has been a little bit uh there's a little bevel gear that fits on this that goes up inside the the case and when you Basically, all you do is you, you, you turn this thing. I mean, it's probably only an action about that much, maybe an eighth of a turn, uh, not, not even a quarter of a turn, but uh, that's all that's really moving. And this engages um, the actual clutch on the, on the lathe. Uh, on this side, um, you got this little round area. That's what we chucked up into. And there's just this adapter uh, that fits down in here. Um, and when I tested it a few minutes ago, it went right down. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Helps if you go the right way. There you go. That adapter goes in there, and that will basically convert this from a round to a square rod. And uh, the square rod, uh, we've got to do some straightening on that as well. This all bent up, but uh, I'm going to do that later on. But I think we're going to call the, the handle uh, done. Uh, I'm happy with it. Like I said, we may have to do a little tweaking on this uh, stud because it's definitely been bent uh, and I can probably just heat it up and tap it back over if I need to. But I think I'm going to do is dry fit it all together and just see if it works. And uh, if it doesn't, we'll mess with that. Uh, but anyway, that's going to be a wrap on our little uh, brazing operation here to fix this broken handle. Uh, took a little bit of work, but I think we have successfully uh, salvaged another part. And with that, that'll be a wrap. Thanks for watching, guys.